Now cheerio there champs, what is the best 13 inch laptop you can buy at the moment? We're talking Ultrabooks here. To qualify for this, you have to be a thin and light Ultrabook with a premium build. That's why I ruled out the Surface Book 2 because at the end of the day, it's not that thin and light compared to these laptops. Well, it's actually not that much heavier than the MacBook Pro, but it is a hybrid, it is a two in one, so it's not really a laptop. So what is the best 13 inch Ultrabook you can buy as of today? The actual Zenbook is actually a 14 inch. It's because it's actually thinner and lighter than the MacBook Pro. So I think if you're in the market for a 13 inch Ultrabook, this is worth considering too. So the three laptops we'll be comparing is the 217 MacBook Pro 13 inch non-touch. I will talk about the touch version as well. The Zenbook 3 Deluxe UX 490 UA and the Dell XPS 13 9370. That's the 2018 model. Now now when it comes to price, no surprise here, the Mac is the most expensive. If we spec them up all the same to their higher end models, the Mac will be about 2K for the non-touch version, 2200 for the touch bar version. You can pick up the Zenbook for around 1700 US and currently the XPS 13 is 1900 for this high spec configuration with the 4K display. In terms of build quality, they are all top draw here. They all get full marks for premium design premium materials it's going to come down to personal preference which one you like better in terms of aesthetics i just love the xps 13 with the white interior that is just so sexy they're all beautiful they're all constructed to the highest standard possible these are pretty much all the benchmark when it comes to fit and finish and build quality. So let me know in the comments actually, which one do you prefer? Which one do you like the look of? I'd really like to know that. Leave a comment down there, it's right near the like button. And if you're new around here, please subscribe. When it comes to specs, okay, so the MacBook Pro is using dual core processors, the seventh generation dual core processors. So it is a generation behind the ZenBook and the XPS 13, which use the eighth generation quad core parts. They all have a maximum of 16 gigabytes RAM, the MacBook and the XPS 13, you can get up to one terabyte SSD. And with the ZenBook, you can get up to 512 gigabyte SSD. The MacBook Pro's SSD is soldered in. The other two have upgradable SSDs, M.2 SSDs. ZenBook and XPS 13 have Intel HD graphics. The MacBook Pro has Iris graphics. I do expect that the XPS 13 will eventually come out with Iris graphics also. ZenBook Pro has a 46 watt hour battery. MacBook Pro Pro has a 54.5 watt hour battery and that's the non-touch version which has the bigger battery compared to the touch version. The XPS 13 has a 52 watt hour battery. So the Mac actually does have the biggest battery out of all of them and the ZenBook the smallest. When it comes to weight, the ZenBook is the lightest at 1.1 kilos. The MacBook Pro is the heaviest at 1.37 kilos. That's a fair bit of difference there. The XPS 13 is in the middle, 1.21 kilos. So the XPS 13 is the thinnest at 11.6 millimeters. The MacBook Pro is the thickest at 14.9 millimeters and the ZenBook 3 is 12.9 millimeters in the middle. Overall, the XPS 13 is the smallest. It's the most compact. It really is the size of an 11 inch laptop. The ZenBook is the lightest, the MacBook is the heaviest, and it's the thickest and that's really interesting because I think even when they revise these MacBook Pros they're going to keep the same chassis so I don't think they're going to go any thinner and lighter so it is at the heavier and thicker end of this 13 inch segment here so in terms of specs of course the ZenBook and the XPS 13 have the better specs because they have that eighth generation quad core part it is much faster than the dual core seventh generation CPU you get in the Mac. When it comes to ports, they're all very similar. MacBook Pro has two Thunderbolt ports on the non-touch, four Thunderbolt ports on the touch version, that's Thunderbolt 3. The ZenBook has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and one USB-C port. The XPS 13 has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and one USB-C port. Now all the Thunderbolt ports are times four Thunderbolt ports, but the extra thing that the XPS 13 has is it does have a micro SD card slot. So that is handy. You know, you can even put video files on there if you're video editing, you can put photos, whatever. It's just expandable storage or you know if you have a camera that has micro SD you can plug that in and take the files off that I have to give it to the XPS 13 there just because of that when it comes to sound this is very easy the Mac has the best sound 10 out of 10 
The Zenbook has a very good sound. I'd give that 9 out of 10. And the XPS 13 has very good sound as well. I'd give that about an 8 out of 10. When it comes to keyboard and trackpad, I think that's easy to judge as well. The Mac definitely has the best trackpad, 10 out of 10. I'd say the XPS 13 has the next best trackpad. I'll give that an 8 out of 10. And the Zenbook Deluxe would have maybe a seven and a half out of 10 trackpad. It's not quite as good as the XPS 13s. When it comes to keyboard, you can sort of flip that around. The Mac, I don't like the Mac keyboard. It is a bit shallow. Some people love it, so you will have to try these keyboards, but it's too jarring and shallow for me. I think the XPS 13 has the best keyboard followed closely by the Zenbook. So when it comes to display, now this is hard, so we'll just judge them on their best display. The MacBook only comes with one display. It's 2560 by 1600, wide color gamut, P3. It's non-touch, 13.3 inch, 16 by 10 ratio. So it is a bit taller than both the ZenBook and the XPS 13. The XPS 13 comes with a full HD model. That is non-touch. It is a good display, 100% sRGB. It's non-touch, as I said, and it also has the option of a 4K display, 100% sRGB, and that one is touch. The ZenBook only comes with one display 100% sRGB full HD display and that is 14 inch 16 by 9 ratio the same as the XPS 13 but it is the biggest screen so here you're going to have to work out what do you need the best two displays I think are the 4k on the XPS 13 and the Mac display the Mac has that wider color gamut so it does have the widest color gamut the Mac and the XPS 13 brightness is around the same if you're doing like say desktop publishing or printing or stuff like that the Mac does have the widest color gamut but if you're just talking overall better display I think the XPS 13 has the best display what you get with a 4k screen on a 13 inch laptop it does look like overkill but you get a sharper image you notice when you have a phone when you have a 1080p phone versus a uh, 2k phone you'll notice that the higher resolution phone does have a sharper image the 4k display on the xps 13 is sharper than the mac display they are both phenomenal quality the xps 13 also does have touch but the mac has the wider color gamut let me know what you think is the better display that's what i would say it will depend on your usage but overall considering touch 4K bright screen. I think the XPS shades it here over the Mac. Although out of those two, you can't really go wrong. They are both cracking displays. And remember the Mac's display is a little bit taller. Now the ZenBook 3 Deluxe display is very good. Make no mistake. It is full HD. It is the biggest display because it is 14 inch, 100% sRGB. So respectable color gamut there. It is a beautiful display, no doubt about it, but the Mac and the XPS do have the better display when it comes to the high-end display on the XPS 13 and the Mac, every Mac gets the same display. So they are better than the ZenBook's display. So let me know down there in the comments again, which display would you prefer? When it comes to battery life, the Mac does have the biggest battery, but if you're talking just the best battery life, it's actually the XPS 13 with the full HD display. That has 10 hours battery life. I was able to get nearly 14 hours just running YouTube continuously. You'll get, for general web surfing and stuff like that, you will get in excess of 10 hours. MacBook Pro does have the biggest battery. Your nine to 10 hours you'll get out of the MacBook Pro, the non-touch version, the touch version you'll get less. Now, if you put the 4K display on the XPS 13, the battery life on the Mac is better. It's probably about an hour better, but they're very close once you have the high res display on the XPS 13 versus the standard display that comes with the Mac. They're very similar, but if you want like really long battery life, you have the choice of the Full HD on the XPS 13. With the ZenBook, you're only gonna get six, seven hours battery life because it does have the smallest battery. But these are the compromises that you have to make. It is the thinnest and lightest. So six, seven hours, I think is okay. Are you willing to sacrifice, you know, battery life for something that's thin and light? Some people do. Again, let me know in the comments, would you prefer a bigger laptop, fatter, with better battery life, or would you like thinner and a bit less battery life? These are the decisions that the manufacturers have to make. Make, and this is what they come up with. So in terms of performance, no doubt the ZenBook and the XPS 13 are 
of a magnitude faster than the MacBook Pro just because they are quad cores versus dual cores on the MacBook Pro. They should update the MacBook Pros this year, but I wouldn't hold your breath, but I think they will. Do not buy a dual core seventh generation MacBook Pro 13 inch now. Wait for the quad cores. The Max, they do throttle anyway because their thermal design is not very well so you don't get the maximum performance anyway and once they put quad cores in there unless they upgrade the cooling solution they're going to throttle anyway so you probably won't get the performance that you get with the ZenBook and the XPS 13 they have identical CPUs so you would think that the performance is identical but it's not the XPS 13 has the best tuned quad core going around the 15 watt 8th generation quad core in the XPS 13 goes harder for longer and it actually can burst over 3 gigahertz for nearly 2 minutes whereas the one in the ZenBook will only do that for you know roughly 40 seconds and then it will drop down to 2.2, 2.4 and the temperatures are low on the ZenBook like they're only 60 maybe maximum 70 but the clock speed is you know it's not that high whereas the XPS 13 the clock speeds are consistently higher. Now it does produce more heat, but you won't feel that heat because it has this core technology, this space age insulation technology inside the XPS 13, where you do not feel the heat on your lap. It's amazing, like you feel the underneath and you think, how is this 80, 90 degrees inside? Now the reason it is hotter is because it's got a higher clock speed, but you don't feel that. So it's really well tuned, the Dell, the Mac, dual cores, and it does throttle. So the best performance is the XPS 13, followed by the ZenBook, and the MacBook Pro is like way behind, really. It is far behind. When it comes to upgradability, the only ones you can upgrade are the ZenBook Pro and the XPS 13, where you can actually upgrade the M.2 SSD. All of these laptops have soldered in RAM, so you cannot upgrade the RAM, so I do recommend you get the highest capacity of RAM that you can afford on any of these laptops. So in conclusion, what is the best 13-inch Ultrabook? you can buy today first please let me know what you think i really want to know but me personally i have to go the xps 13 shock horror considering it does have the best performance out of all these laptops i think arguably the best display out of all these laptops it certainly has class leading battery life it is the most compact out of all of them it is tiny you will not believe that it has a 13 inch display so overall i have to give it to the xps 13 followed by the zenbook that would be my second choice. And that's just because it's got the quad core. If it didn't have the quad core, I'll probably choose the Mac second just because of its display. Again, if they had a bit of display in the ZenBook, I probably would choose that second if everyone had the same CPU. The MacBook Pro, the thing is, it's a bit heavier and bulkier than all of them. It's just, it looks like it needs a refresh in terms of design. The design looks fine. It's just thicker, heavier, and bigger than anything else it's compared to like these two laptops so it does sort of look a bit cumbersome but it is still a great laptop but do not buy the dual core wait for the refresh and then maybe i'll do another shootout i'd like to thank you guys for watching give me a thumbs up if you like this video and if you're new around here please subscribe and until next time guys